Well, good morning. We're going to make a wee start and give you all a very, very warm welcome. Lovely to see you. Isn't it a beautiful day? It's wonderful. Um, the sun is shining. Um, and the sun is risen. He is risen. He is ri risen indeed. So, um, I'm going to like to start by reading a psalm, and it's Psalm 100 this morning. And Psalm 100 um, says this Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. What wonderful words um, this morning. Um, we can enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, and that we might be thankful um, today. There's lots of things to be thankful for. So let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. Help us to look away from things that surround us, that we might look unto Jesus, that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, that you would stir us, stir us that we might rise up and bless you and praise you, Father, that our faith might be in you and not others, that our faith might be in what you have done Lord, help us to remind one another of the things that you have done this morning. And we, Lord, that you, that, that you will come amongst us and that this time might be special because you are here. So, Lord, we praise you and we thank you this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, that all the earth rejoices, all the earth rejoices. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands And time is in his hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The God had feet in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb Lion and the Lamb How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God Oh, see how great How great is our God How great
just can't take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the great opportunity we have this morning of being together to worship Jesus. That it, yes, we can do it on our own, but Lord, it's so it's so meaningful as we do this part of with with your people, Lord, that you have chosen us, chosen near us. Why would you choose us that to draw together, Lord, that we might be part of your church, that we might sing praises unto you, that you have called us out of darkness into your amazing light, Lord, so that we are privileged this morning. You have given us garments of praise. You've taken off our old, rotten, sin clothes and given us new garments. So we praise you this morning. We thank you. Help us, Lord just to see what you have really done for us and that we might skip like calves that have been released from the stall um, and as we go out Lord that we might shed abroad the glories of your name and lives Lord we pray Amen, Amen. <coughs> For the next few minutes as we um, are together we're going to continue from Luke's Gospel and the scripture reading this morning is from Luke chapter 17 and it's verse 11. It's Luke chapter 17 reading from verse 11 through to 19 and it's the passage where Jesus cleanses the ten lepers. Luke chapter 17 reading from verse 11. And the word of God says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Sorry. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, 
have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, Arise, and he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Amen. And I trust this morning we'll receive something of God's um, lesson as we read, read these scriptures and what can he say to us through them. This is really a good news story. Um, this is a story from the Gospels. These Gospels are all about good news. If you want to hear some amazing news, read the Gospels. In fact, a friend used to say to me, if you want to get close to the Lord, um, keep reading the Gospels because it's Jesus is in the Gospels and they do stir us and um, we're continuing our look at Luke's Gospel. Luke is different from the other Gospels and it will highlight different things. And will you find this story in Matthew and in John's Gospel? In Mark's Gospel? No, you won't find this story in, in Matthew's Gospel. You won't find it in Mark's Gospel um, or John's Gospel. You find it in Luke. Remember, Luke was a doctor by profession. He ministers to sick people, but he'd never seen anyone else like Jesus ministering to sick people. Jesus ministered. In, ministry was an incredible ministry of helping people and so this might have interested Luke being a doctor um, someone who had cured an incurable disease so I think Luke might have you think it might have interested him I think so so it, it has a specific interest to Luke and he records this whereas the other gospel writers didn't record this um, and the Jews thought that leprosy Someone, you must have had done something really terrible and it was the punishment of God on your life, um, a mark of God's displeasure. And I think Jesus answers that by actually helping these men. It wasn't a mark of God's displeasure. It was part of the world system. It's part of the fall, part of the fruit of the fall. Sickness came in with fear and everything else, with sin. And man fell. Um, the world fell, um, the cosmos fell, it's a fallen world and so often we get sick because that's what's in the world um, and you, each one of us probably here have, has been sick at one stage of our life um, and so God in the ministry of Jesus speaks to us that he is well able to rescue us, help us and heal us and save us um, so God can help us in our deepest need and so in this passage he clearly demonstrates that people who are isolated separated lonely um, excluded from others marginalized Jesus is well able to help them um, and that could be you and I we were once separated from God, we were distant from him, um, didn't have a thing, thought about him. He thought about us, but we didn't have a thought about him, and he drew us to himself. Um, and for others, sometimes in our lifestyle, we can feel separated from others, we can feel rejected by others, we can feel lonely, we can feel marginalised, nobody cares for us. Jesus meets our deepest need, he can help us. And we see in this amazing story, he helped his lepers. Um, and just one or two things that came up as we um, I thought through the story. Um, it says, there's a reference in Leviticus 13, it's 45 and 46. There's instances in the Old Testament about leprosy. And they would be an interesting study to do. Um, Naaman, he had leprosy. Um, 
Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, he had leprosy. So there's instances in the Old Testament you could look at. And Leviticus 13 says this, Now the leper shall cry, unclean, unclean, and he shall dwell alone, and his dwelling shall be outside the camp. So if you had leprosy, um, you were excluded from the main group of people. You had to live alone, and you were living outside the camp. Um, so I think it's significant that Jesus healed these people and he includes people all are welcome to come to Christ or they're not it doesn't matter our condition all the gospel is for every person um, it's inclusive and it's exclusive um, the big qual qualification is do you believe do you believe so? Jesus includes everyone. Jesus died for the whole world. But he demands that we believe, that we turn to him and we believe. Um, so verse, just a few things. Verse 11 says this. Verse 11 says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. From from Luke 9.51 right through to Luke 9.27 it's about Jesus going to Jerusalem. I think that's significant that it says there in verse 11 he was going to Jerusalem. This was Jesus in the last, in a sense, phase of his ministry on earth. He was heading to Jerusalem and he visited Jerusalem many times but in this instant it, he's going to Jerusalem for a specific purpose, and that was the purpose of his crucifixion. This is, wasn't one of the many times he visited Jerusalem. This was the last time he would go to Jerusalem. So I think that is significant that it mentions that. 951 starts his journey to Jerusalem, um, and it says, When the days drew near for him to be taken up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. It was for a fulfilment of Isaiah 50, verse 7. He set, set my face like a flint to go to Jerusalem. Jesus knew he was going to be, in a sense, sacrificed for the sin of the world, for you and I. So, with that aim in mind that he was going to Jerusalem, he, could, he was <coughs> healing these men on the way. Because his death on the cross would give him his blood shed on that cross. He could heal us. He could bring us close to himself because of that. That separation from God was sorted. It was, it was dealt with. Um, so the fact that Jesus was going, it wasn't just going anywhere. He was going to Jerusalem. Hebrews 13 verse 12 said therefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered outside the gate therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp bearing his reproach that Christ was rejected that we might be accepted isn't that is that not the greatest message we could ever have. Jesus was rejected. He suffered outside. He was rejected. He was forsaken by God the Father that we might be accepted. And oh, like we might be like Jesus, that we might be steadfast. Are you a Christian? Yes. Are you going to go on as a Christian? Yes, despite the difficulties I want to commit myself or be steadfast Lord I believe help my unbelief that we might be steadfast and follow in the footsteps of Jesus steadfast in the things of God Jesus set his face like a flint um, he was rejected he was forsaken verse 13 says this and they, that is the lepers, lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. That is very interesting words that they used. They called him Jesus, 
they actually called out to the Lord God Almighty. Um, and people are doing that today. I trust that you've done, you've done that yourself. No one can become a Christian without calling on the name of Jesus. They lifted up their voice saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They gave expression to the, the need within them and they cried out to Jesus. And we need to do that. We need to give expression, voice our need before God and say, Lord, help me. Um, help me, Jesus. And they called him Master. You know that Luke is the only gospel writer that will use this word master in its specific um, Greek word. It's used six times in Luke's gospel and only Luke uses it. Matthew doesn't use it. Mark doesn't use it. But Luke uses this specific Greek word and it means commander, chief, overseer and it's a recognition of authority that not only did they see Jesus as saviour, but they recognise that he is the ultimate authority. That what he says, he is the Lord, happens. What he says, happens. And one of the incidences, there's six places it's used. The, other, the first one is in, Ma in Luke 5, verse 5. And you might think, what's Luke 5, verse 5? Well, if we go back to Luke 5, verse 5, it says, remember, they've been fishing. The disciples have been fishing. Peter's been fishing. And they've been fishing all night. They're professional fishermen. They know where the fish is, don't they? They know exactly everything about fishing. Um, but they caught nothing. So they, they were terrific fishermen. They caught absolutely nothing. And launched out... When Jesus spoke to them, he said, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, this is the same word that's used when cleaning, cleansing the disciples. He says, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So, Peter recognised that Jesus had ultimate authority. If you are saying it, Lord, I'm going to do it. Um, that's one of the instances. And what happened? They caught an amazing catch of fish. Um, the next, so because he obeyed, because Peter obeyed, they received a harvest. Um, in, eight, in Luke chapter 8, verse 24, this is a good one. Luke 8, verse 24 is the, one of the next instances. And it's when Jesus calms the storm. Let me read this. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. They were in the boat, and Jesus fell asleep in the boat, and a windstorm came down on the lake. And they, were, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Same word. Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm. And in a sense, Jesus chided his disciples. He said to them, Where is your faith? Maybe that's what the, the Lord would say to us sometimes when we're in the middle of a storm. We think God is sleeping. We think he's not, doesn't care about us. We think he's, he's gone away on a holiday. God doesn't seem to be answering. God knows exactly everything that happens in our life. And he gives us the answer when we need the answer. Um, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. And so the term master is really linked with authority. They recognize that he is the ultimate authority. He controls the winds and the waves. Lord, whatever you say, you are the Lord. You are the master. You are the commander. 
Um, there was a film called Master and Commander, was there not? There was a film made Master and Commander, wasn't there? A quite an interesting film. Um, but Jesus is the, he's the Lord of the heavens and he's the Lord of the earth and he can, can he calm your storms? He can calm our storms. Um, he is the master and commander. And so if you look at, examine all the incidents where the name master is used by Luke, you have an incredible um, story. And the ultimate, the, the end of the story, it's a good news story. He heals these ten lepers and he doesn't pray over them. He doesn't lay hands on them. He tells them something. He says, go, show yourselves to the priests. He said, go. Um, maybe they were expecting Jesus to lay hands on them. And he didn't. Or, you know, speak a word of faith to them or something. He said, go, show yourself to the priests. And as they did it, as they went, they got an amazing healing in their life. And as, as we obey the word of God, as I obey the word, as I go and obey what God is telling me to do, um, we can find a tremendous transformation in our life. You think, who would use four lepers sitting out a city, standing outside a city, four lepers? They said, if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go over to the camp, you remember the story in Kings, if we go over to the camp of the Syrians, we might live. So let's do that. And as they went, amazing things happened. Is it not? And amazing things happened. They rescued a city. And even next weekend, you think, what can we do in Dunoon? You know, and I don't think we should be fearful of it. It's, oh, this is, this is, a real, you know, I can't do this and I can't do it. It's a real opportunity. I believe as we go, some wonderful things will can happen as we distrust in the Lord and as we seek to hire the borough hall and do something different. Um, God can help us. God can rescue people. No, He can deliver people. He can save people. Um, and these lepers returned with a loud voice, glorifying God. And he said to the Samaritan, it was a Samaritan, someone who was unclean, someone who wasn't a Jew, someone who wasn't one of the chosen, um, he was a foreigner, you know, he was more than excluded, he was excluded and excluded. And he came back and he praised God and he thanked God. Um, we're not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were they not or any found who returned to God to give glory to him except this foreigner? And, and Jesus said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Just obeying what the Lord has said, he did it. And he tremendous transformation in his life. And I trust that's what we will do ourselves. That as we obey the word of God, then we can know the presence of God in our life. We can know the transformation that he can bring into our lives. It's a good news story, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous story when you think about it. A wonderful story. Um, the Samaritan comes back to thank Jesus. Amen.